Good morning, everyone. I want to begin by respectfully acknowledging that we are currently situated in the territory and Treaty 13 lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. We also recognize the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat and the Haudenosaunee. As a provincial representative of the people and families of Vaughan Woodbridge, I am very grateful to have the opportunity to work within this territory. It is truly an honor to be here today with all of you and to welcome my good friend, colleague, and Ontario's Minister of Long-Term Care, Rod Phillips. Welcome to the beautiful riding of Vaughan Woodbridge. During the COVID-19 pandemic, our community here in Vaughan Woodbridge was hit hard by this terrible virus. It affected many of our seniors in long-term care and impacted on the mental wellness of the many families here. I spent many days visiting local homes and meeting with families of our senior residents, as well as meeting many of the residents themselves. Although our community was hit hard during this pandemic, thanks to the hard work of so many people, families, and countless healthcare workers in our community, we have been making incredible progress in our fight against COVID-19. As many of you know, our government made a promise to move our seniors away from extensive wait lists and into a modern long-term care home structure that provides a comfortable, warm, and safe environment with the high quality care that our seniors and their families expect and deserve. And you will hear from Minister Phillips shortly, we are truly delivering on that promise. In 2020, three pieces of unused government land were put up for sale on the condition that they become sites for long-term care facilities. We are standing on one of those properties right now. The ministry used a fair and highly competitive process to determine the winning bid. And I'm incredibly pre pleased that a brand new long-term care home can be built in the heart of our community. This new home will provide many of our loved ones with a modern, safe, and comfortable place to live. This is truly amazing news for our community, and thank you to everyone for making this possible. As the MPP of Vaughan Woodbridge, I will continue being a strong voice and advocate for our seniors and ensure, ensure that we get our loved ones into long-term care homes sooner in an environment where they are fully supported. Thank you so much for being here today, and I'd now like to turn over to Minister Phillips, who will make some uh, additional comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. It's great to be here uh, in Vaughan Woodbridge with my colleague, the Honourable Michael Tabolo, uh, a great representative for, for this riding in this community. Also um, with his, his partner here in Vaughan, uh, Stephen Lecce, uh, the Honourable Stephen Lecce, the Minister of Education. I was commenting to Mayor Bevilacqua before. It's a, it's a, a real uh, a wonderful thing for the community of Vaughan to have two such influential ministers here in this community, and I'm very pleased they're here with me today. I'm also enormously pleased that, uh, that the Mayor of Vaughan, uh, Maurizio Bevilacqua is here with us today. Uh, the old uh, the old saying goes: They say if a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears, the tree didn't fall. Well, if something happens in Vaughan and Maurizio Bevilacqua isn't there, then I'm not sure it happened. So, Maurizio, thank you for uh, for joining us uh, for this important announcement. We're here on the site of uh, of a um, of of some currently provincially owned land. This is uh, land that was bought by the province in the 70s and 80s. Um, and has been used for a variety of uses. A portion of that land was used uh, to build a municipal sports facility. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a baseball diamond and soccer fields nearby. But part of our government's uh, focus on long-term care is about making sure that facilities are built in some of the communities where that can be most difficult. And as everybody across the GTA knows, one of the challenges in the GTA is affordability and, of course, the cost of property. So that's why, as uh, Minister Tobolo mentioned, I'm very proud to be here on this site, here in Vaughan, um, where we are uh, announcing the fact that we will be building a new, a new 256 bed long term care facility with the support of the province through the contribution of our provincial lands. Now, after decades of neglect, our government is taking the steps necessary to fix long term care. 
We're acting on the recommendations received from the Long-Term Care Commission, from various other commissions, and from the conversations that myself and my colleagues have had with frontline health care workers, with families, and with others. It's time for change, time for transformational change, and that change is built on three pillars. The first is more staffing and more care. The second is making sure that we're building more comfortable, modern, safe beds for our seniors. And the third is making sure that our system has more accountability, transparency and, import, and, uh, and, and uh, enforcement. Now, in terms of building those beds, our government has so far invested almost $2.7 billion uh, to build 30,000 new beds uh, across the province. It's worth noting that between 2011 and 2018, only 611 net new beds were built across the entire province. That's in spite of the overwhelming evidence that people could see about an aging population and the overwhelming waiting lists. Now this 256 beds on this site is part of 2,686 new beds that are currently committed just in York Region. So that's almost four times the number of beds that were built in the seven years that preceded our government's election. And that's just here in York Region. And that's part of that commitment of 30,000 net new beds, uh, 20,000 of which have already been announced. So 60% of that uh, project uh, already underway. But very pleased that 256 of those new, modern, state-of-the-art beds are going to be built here on this site with the assistance of the provincial lands that I talked about. Now, in the last few days, I've visited the over 300 beds being built at the Ajax Pickering sites. Those are beds that will be available this spring. Um, I celebrated the grand opening of Faith Manor in Brampton and the Grove Nursing Home in Armprior just outside Ottawa. Uh, over 100 beds on both of those locations. Again, new beds. And again, today, here we are in Vaughan on the site of another new location. The province has signed a conditional agreement to purchase and sale of this site with Arch Vaughan uh, Facility, Inc., and that's part of the process, the very competitive process that uh, Minister Tobolo talked about. As he mentioned, we have other processes underway that we'll be announcing the results of soon, where new beds will be built as a result of the contribution of provincial lands. This future site will have 256 modern, comfortable beds for seniors. That's 256 brand new beds that we hope will be available and are planned to be available by 2026. Residents of the homes will have access to rooms that are built in modern design standings, full air conditioning, and culturally appropriate services focused on the Italian community that is so uh, dominant here in the Vaughan area. Now, removing the barriers that developers face, that, that, that we face in terms including provincial land, is just one of the solutions that our provincial government has come up with to make sure we address the challenge of providing more beds. Now, it means that, uh, that we will be uh, dealing with that uh, lack of facilities that we've talked about over decades, and it's part of the many actions that we're taking to fix the long-term care system here in Ontario. We are committed, as I've said before, to putting legislation forward this fall that will deal with issues related to accountability of operators, that will deal with enforcement and the importance to improve enforcement, and will deal with issues around transparency. We're also putting forward significant investments in terms of staffing. Just last week, I announced new staffing dollars, which just in the community of Vaughan alone are going to add up to three million more dollars for staffing just for the homes in Vaughan this year, and over 20 million dollars every year, more revenue or more dollars for staffing in four years. That's part of our commitment of four years of care or four hours of care per resident, and that's part of making sure that there are literally hundreds and hundreds more nurses, more practical nurses, and more PSWs to support our seniors in fabulous new facilities like the one that I know will be built here. So it's a real pleasure to be here uh, today to talk about this new facility. And I'd like to introduce now Dan Arglios. Dan's the chairman and CEO of Arch Long-Term Care. We are building these homes in collaboration with a number of organizations, some for profit, some not for profit, uh, some uh, municipal. Uh, we have over 220 building projects ongoing right now across the province, building these new, comfortable, safe homes for seniors. Um, and I'd like to Dan now to come up and speak a little bit about his organization's commitment to what's going to be built right here in Vaughan. Dan? Thank you, Minister. It's an honour to be here today. On behalf of myself and all my colleagues at Arch, 
thank you very much for this opportunity to actively participate with you in the renewal and expansion of the provincial long-term care sector. Thank you for your confidence in ARCH, and I can assure you that we will not disappoint. The next time we meet here, it'll be to officially open a new facility of 250, for 256 of this community seniors. I can tell you that we are engaged, specifically our head of construction with the Ministry of Long-Term Care, your planning department, your mayor, and the TRCA as we work towards beginning construction and eventually welcoming residents, which we hope will be late in the fall of 2024. We expect this facility to cost about $80 million to build and furnish, and it will integrate various renewable energy and clean energy technologies to offset the carbon footprint. But importantly, the design concept we are using will privilege the health and well-being of all building occupants. Building material selection, strong indoor-outdoor connection to the abundance of green space in the region, all will serve to normalize the care environment and provide for thoughtful, comforting, and engaging spaces that are also operationally efficient and functionally flexible. The approach will allow Shanna Bond, our head of operations, to deliver best-in-class experience, meeting the top emotional drivers for our residents. Safety, sense of control, and feeling at home, while providing a superior health and wellness program, allowing for a more interactive and holistic approach to care. Lastly, this facility will soon become an important part of this community and we hope it will ex enhance the existing key ecological features of this site and be a net contributor to the development of the community. Thank you for this opportunity. First of all, I want to uh, say, ministers, that uh, you've extended uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, and by that, I mean that I want to the day after Thanksgiving Day, express my sincerest gratitude uh, for the announcement uh, today. I think that to put this announcement into perspective uh, requires us to really think about the importance of the announcement. I think that all of us are very well versed, versed I should say, on, on, on the importance of long-term care. There is no question about that, that this is an area that requires government attention. Now you are you are here in this piece of property, in this piece of land that lies dormant. And, and the idea that it's sleeping uh, tells me that we must give it life. And I think what the provincial government has done is investing in people, in people that actually need it most, namely our seniors, and give this property life to where we can come back in a few years and, and observe uh, the, the, the fact that we now have ex an extra 256 beds uh, of long-term care. Uh, I do want to say that uh, this capital is being used wisely. Uh, it is land capital that is turned into social capital uh, that is providing a very important, uh, providing an opportunity to expand opportunities uh, for, for our seniors. And remember uh, that behind those numbers, 256 beds, lie human lives. Uh, people that are going to be facing some challenges along the way. And I'm very happy to see that we have a caring private sector that is joined with the government uh, to provide uh, this important uh, and vital service. Um, Minister Phillips, uh, Minister Lecce, Minister Tobolo, uh, I want to thank you uh, for this investment. I, I want to thank you for recognizing the needs of our community the real needs of our community, human needs of our community. Uh, and it speaks to the fact that uh, you have the great capacity uh, to, to have really your feet on the ground, literally uh, addressing the needs of uh, the city of Vaughan, uh, its seniors, and specifically uh, the community uh, minister that uh, you correctly pointed out in your remarks. I want to uh, also say that um, on behalf of city council, uh, we want to, to thank you for uh, helping us build the city. I often say that uh, city building is a labor of love and you need partners uh, to make it happen. You need partners to actualize the true potential uh, of our city 
and, and I'm happy uh, to be here with uh, three great partners uh, who have given us uh, the opportunity to hope for a better tomorrow uh, for the seniors who will be here, being taken care of in a very loving way and compassionate way uh, by individuals who give of themselves day in and day out uh, to improve uh, the human condition. So to, to all of you, uh, thank you so much. And uh, as I often say, uh, I look forward uh, to, to the next announcement here in the, in the city of Vaughan by the province of Ontario so that we collectively can continue to build uh, the great city that the city of Vaughan is. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I want to first off just express my gratitude to my colleague uh, Michael Tobolo for his advocacy for this project here for the people of Vaughan. It is going to benefit every single resident in our community because we need more long-term care spaces. We know so many families that are waiting and this announcement, this support and this innovative par uh, partnership that emerged here with the province providing the land uh, with a willing private sector partner to dedicate this for our seniors is a great outcome for so many of our uh, the greatest generation and I know providing culturally uh, responsive services for the Italian community is something we need more of and we welcome and we support so we thank Minister Phillips for his leadership the mayor for his partnership and I also just want to say in the concept of building yes we are building a new long-term care facility here in the city of Vaughan but we have just completed and just opened following the build of the new Cordellucci Vaughan Hospital that's going to add support and care for our seniors, for our families, for our kids. A $1.7 billion investment uh, in the city that is making a meaningful difference that stepped up to support the pandemic response and now supporting families in our community. We just built and opened the hospice, uh, Hospice Vaughan, a $2 million contribution by the province to help get that there opened uh, a compassionate palliative care centre for those at the end of their life. And of course, we continue to build infrastructure, including the reopening of the 427 extension to Major McKenzie. And I'd be remiss not to mention subway expansion further north into York region. This is all because our Premier and our government is committed to investing and in building this province, uh, getting, um, improving the quality of life of our families. So we're grateful for the partnership. Thank you to everyone who's part of this. Um, and of course, I want to thank the people of Vaughan for your continued advocacy today. Thank you so much. So thank you and be happy to take any question. So we'll go to the floor, uh, the floor for questions. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow up. Here we go. Minister of Education, please. Minister uh, Lecce, um, two questions. First one is um, uh, one school is closed in, in uh, Toronto as a result of a, a, a COVID scare. Um, are there any other schools in Ontario that are in uh, precarious situations right now? And how is uh, the school, what is the outlook for the school? Is it going to be open soon? How, how, what is the Ministry of Education doing to help these students? Absolutely. We are obviously um, working in partnership with public health units across Ontario to keep our schools open. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that you know, 99.9% .9 of our schools in this province are open, that over 2 million children are learning today in class. There are about 4,800 schools in Ontario, of which we're aware of six that are closed province-wide. This is the first in Toronto, but I will note that Toronto Public Health, the Chief Medical Officer of Health, all of whom have said the cautious, preventative layers of, uh, uh, of protection put in place in our schools have been effective at reducing spread, reducing outbreaks, and keeping kids safe. Uh, three out of four schools in this province amid the delta driven fourth wave have no active cases at all but we are taking nothing for granted it's why we have extended the rapid antigen testing program to public health units to deploy to keep schools open and it's why we have taken a cautious approach in the start in september by launching a take-home test program by requiring every student to screen and staff member to screen before they enter the enhancement of testing of cleaning uh, as well as the massive improvement in ventilation in Toronto specifically, but to be fair, in schools, in every school across Ontario. So we're working closely with the Chief Medical Officer of Health um, to uh, keep students safe. Uh, I will note that in this particular case, uh, there is uh, extension of testing, including PCR testing to the entire school community, which is preferred by Ontario Health, in addition to vaccine clinics to increase the rate of vaccines in that community for the students, the staff and the parents all designed to reduce the disruption so that we can get these kids back to class. 
Um, and next question is about, uh, I, I'm requesting for an update on the negotiations with Ottawa for $10 a day daycare. Um, we're seeing that uh, a lot of, uh, of the larger provinces and smaller provinces have already made deals with Ottawa. Um, sure. I understand that it's, uh, sources are telling me and telling uh, other news outlets that it's uh, the province is dragging their heels in negotiating with Ottawa. It's um, even when we have 40% of the, almost 40% of the population of Canada, mm -hmm. um, it's turning up to be a money issue from Ottawa. Is that what's happening, or uh, when can we yeah. get an update? For sure. We have been negotiating in good faith the federal government for many, many months to get a good deal for the people of Ontario. Not any deal, a good deal that reflects the unique advantages of this province when it comes to our child care system. The fact is, you mentioned 40% of the population. 40% was the rate of increase under the former Liberal government. And I say this respectfully, no government um, you know, or no party should be uh, defending a record of increases when we know childcare is the most, second most expensive in Canada. That's just unacceptable to families. The Premier came into office with a commitment to reduce the rate, which is why we introduced a tax credit, uh, which we just enriched in the last budget. Now $1,500 per child on average it saves. That's not going to do it in, in itself. We still want a deal with the federal government. It has to be a deal that, you, that, that includes the unique advantages that include all day kindergarten. So while we work with the federal government, we hope for a deal that is affordable, that is accessible. We're gonna to continue to make the case to our federal colleagues that we want um, a better deal. Uh, and I think that many of the newly elected Liberal MPs in Ontario would probably agree. We want a good deal for the province of Ontario that gets our kids uh, affordable quality and accessible child care. That's what the government is committed to, and that's what we're going to continue to fight for at the negotiating table. Next question. Foreign Minister Phillips, please. Uh, Martin Trainer, CBC News. Hi, uh, what's the latest information you have on the staffing shortages at uh, long term uh, homes? Uh, uh, maybe talk about the staff training. training sure. Sure, you know, one of the uh, one of the things that we've been addressing has been some of the challenges of staffing in long-term care homes. I was just this morning at uh, Seneca College with Minister Lecce uh, meeting uh, a group of what will be hundreds of PSW students and nursing students coming out of Seneca College that will be part of the solution, as I said, just in the community of Vaughan, uh, out of the $720 million that we provided last week. So that homes can start to hire more staff and those dollars start to flow next month that'll be three million dollars just here in this community to support that but uh, but we are working uh, with our colleges private and public uh, we're working as well uh, with uh, with the post-secondary system in cooperation with Minister Lecce uh, to get as many PSWs trained and into the system and it's just great to see the enthusiasm uh, and I think so I think uh, you know this is something that we're of course working with homes and with organized labor on as well uh, trying to make sure that we you know support uh, the growth both of PSWs and and the make sure that we have enough nurses, registered practical nurses and registered nurses. Next question. Yes, just uh, sorry, just going back to uh, Silverthorne. I'll ask uh, Minister of HA about this. Um, uh, is there anything more that can be done, or are there any discussions about f further measures that can be taken in light of what's happened at Silverthorne uh, to prevent other school closures? Sure. The greatest um, intervention we can take as a community to reduce the spread is to increase the rate of vaccination. Uh, I'm proud that 82% um, of our children, 12 to 17, have a first dose. Over 74% have a second dose. We have one of the highest rates of immunization for young people and for all citizens in the country. Uh, that is an incredible feat, and I'm uh, grateful to the people of Ontario for rolling up their sleeves to be part of the solution. In addition to increasing vaccine rates broadly, as I understand, Toronto Public Health will be deploying vaccine clinics into the community with the aim of encouraging students, their parents and siblings, and of course, staff to continue to be vaccinated. Has a lower rate of uh, vaccination compared to the broader Toronto average. So that's going to be an, a mission and an objective of Toronto Public Health as well as extending the PCR lab process test to the entire school community, which will include a part of the take-home test to reduce the impact for families. All part of the aim to get our children back to class. I will note that while they are at home, um, they will be learning virtually in the, uh, for the short term. Uh, and of course, Toronto Public Health, our public health units are on the scene. They're uh, investigating the matter. They're working closely with the school and they're trying their very best to keep the kids safe to ensure they continue learning and with the commitment to get them back to class as soon as possible. The layers of protection our school, according to the Chief Medical Officer of Health, have been effective at keeping COVID out, reducing transmission. 
Uh, but with that said, we have taken nothing for granted, which is why just last week we announced another step, another tool in the toolkit to reduce spread, to increase uh, safety of schools through the rapid antigen testing program, the screening program, which public health units can deploy where they see fit. Follow up? Uh Either minister it can answer on behalf of your government. Uh, I'm just uh, wondering, there's many people that are, are, are wondering about uh, the recent changes to venues like Scotiabank uh, have to allow full capacity. You have gyms and restaurants uh, that are wondering why uh, there is this difference when you have uh, large groups of people unmasked, eating, drinking, uh, talking, what have you, uh, compared to a small venue like a restaurant or a gym, not uh, being allowed the same uh, the same capacity. Sure. Um, certainly, we understand the pressure on on restaurants, uh, on gyms, and on other businesses. Um, we should be clear that those facilities don't have strict capacity limits, but they have requirements for social distancing. And we work very closely with the chief medical officer, who works very closely with our science table, uh, and we want to make sure that we move in the cautious process that we have to make sure that we're we're making that momentum or keeping that momentum forward. So the decision around the capacity or the ability to have people uh, attend at stadiums and other venues was one that was made in cooperation with the chief medical officer. We will absolutely continue to work with him uh, and continue to work with the restaurant association, with restaurants and others. Uh, but it's just very important that we continue on this cautious approach. Uh, we all want to get past COVID, um, but we're also able to see uh, not so far away some of the challenges where, where some jurisdictions have moved quickly. So that's why there's a continued requirement inside stadiums for masking. Uh, that's why we are, are taking those cautious steps, uh, but we absolutely are listening uh, to our local restaurants, to our local businesses. We want to maintain the progress we're, we've made, um, and that's why we'll continue to le listen to the chief medical officer and move through this as quickly as we can. Next question. This will be the final question. Um, I know the announcement today, when do we expect uh, shovels in the ground and, and the timetable to develop this uh, area into an so, open door facility? So I want to make sure, I think I heard the 20, uh, 2024? Yeah, so, so working, and one of the reasons, I mean, the mayor's here because uh, of his great support for our project. It's also great because one of the one of the important areas of collaboration is going to be uh, the city of Vaughan, just like it is for all of our developments. So we hope to have residents in this facility by 2026, uh, and that means shovels in the ground by 2024. And that's why we have over 220 projects right now across the province that are in different stages of development. But one of my priorities, and that's where I work very closely with local officials and mayors like Mayor Bevilacqua, is to make sure that we move as quickly as possible through those processes. Everybody wants to get those beds open. Uh, everybody wants to get our seniors into the kinds of safe, comfortable, state-of-the-art facilities that we're going to have built here. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody.